Okay, so we're continuing to build assets and we're trying to be smart about it and not too like swamped in details, right? And as we build, there we go, put that grass back in there. We can be kind of quick and dirty with our methods, right? We've all done enough compositing by now to kind of know what we can get away with. And these frames are going to be passing by in just fractions of a second. There we go. Now, professionally, this kind of animation that we're going to be making is called an animatic. In each frame, we're just doing kind of a quick mock-up just to get a sense of it, right? We're trying to communicate the story. I'm going to have a lot of mounds in this setting. I've got a hero mound on a reflection, and this is the beauty of digital, of animating digitally. I can always just make a duplicate and then move it and put that reflection underneath these guys as well. And I can soften the back edge of it, kind of blend it in. And I can duplicate that, move it over, transform it. It's like doing all of our previous projects It's very quickly. Okay, now that I've got some of these different assets, I want to go back to my hero, duplicate that again, shrink it down, move it in, move it on top. And I always start with the, the largest kind of hero asset possible. I'm trying to decide where else I want these. Now my sketch has a lot of them, but I don't know that I need that many to actually get my story across. And I can pull out the big guns at any time. So here I'm going to use a smaller clone stamp. Just to cover up that kind of focal point. Now the reason I'm separating these all out as assets is because I want these mounds to actually like quiver and move a little bit. There it is. So as I do some clone stamping on them, I want to find the different mounts. And that way I can always move them around as well.
I might want to move my hero mound down a little bit. About there. And go to my foreground grass and erase a little bit more of this. Yeah, I think that'll work. Okay. And then, yeah, yeah, nice. Okay, I'm gonna put one more mound in. I'm gonna use my hero. Duplicate it, Command J. Transform it. Put it in the background. Maybe tucked into the corner back there. Rotate it. Distort it. Clone stamp it. All right, so this is what I'm thinking my first scene is, right? That's my establishing shot. Okay, now what assets? Well, maybe I'll do one more, one more. Take my hero mound with its reflection, duplicate it, turn it off, and then just tuck one off into the corner over here. And then pull it into the foreground. I can distort it. Yeah, so that's going to, I can scale it. And let me just darken it a little bit. Just burn the whole thing. Give it more contrast in the foreground. Okay. So now, see I'm dodging and burning on that overlay layer a little bit too to help the lighting. Now I've got my first frame. But look at how many assets it took. It took a lot. So now, how do I change this into a stage? Well, I'm going to keep it at full resolution, which is 8 inches on its narrow end by 350 on its other end. So now what I need to do, once the computer catches up with me, is I'm going to copy my background layer. So I say, I click on the background layer and I say Command A to select all, and then I'd say Command C, copy it. Then I say File New in Photoshop. And this will give me a new file that's the dimensions of what I'm going to copy into it. So it's going to match the size and the resolution perfectly with my background. Come on. Show up, show up, show up. Anytime now, Photoshop. I can close this. I don't need it anymore. Not right now, anyway. I'm going to save it because this is these are the assets I'm building for my treasure chest. 
Come on. Ah. <laughs> Computers can be frustrating. So in building that first frame of my storyboard, I kept each asset as a separate layer because of what comes next. I don't want these to be just lumps as part of the background. I want them to be able to be animated a little bit. So by having them as individual layers, I can move them frame by frame just a little bit, like little puppets that I arrange on the stage. This new document, which is taking so long to, uh, to load. In fact, I'm going to quit that because it's annoying. So instead, I'm going to use an old school solution, which is using a pencil and paper to write down what the dimensions are. So I just go to image size. And you want to note what your assets dimensions are. So it is 12 inches wide, eight inches tall by 350. Okay, and I can say cancel. Now I'm going to make a new Photoshop file. I might have to quit Photoshop. This is taking way too long. That are those dimensions. You know what? Before I do that, maybe one of the reasons it's scaring me that it's taking so long is I haven't saved this. So this I need to save as my assets file. This is where I'm going to build all the different assets for the different frames. So once I save this, hopefully Photoshop will run a little bit more smoothly. Then I'll quit Photoshop and reopen it. Okay. So just like all of the other assignments, I want to save the file with my name first, then a description. And this is going to be assignment five, animation assets. We're going to have two different PSD files. I'm going to save that to the desktop. We'll save all those layers. Right now it's only 330 something megabytes, which isn't too bad. This is going to get a lot bigger with all the assets. Because it just took this many layers to get my first frame. But by setting it up well, that will make animating it so much easier. Is there something I can do while I was saving it? So the next thing I need to do is look ahead and I can, I can do many frames of these like slightly moving and jiggling and stuff, but then I have to introduce my character. And for that, I have to go back to this file because I have to transition between this position and a position where the head is out. And yes, I could just swap it. So now all of a sudden the creature is there with its head out, but that's going to feel a little cheap. So I, I usually want to build the assets in between. And we're going to learn how to do something called puppet warp to do that. So here now I've got my combined layer at the top, but I want to find ways of building in stages. And my creature actually isn't going to um, walk anywhere. So I don't know that I really need the feet as assets, especially because it's in water anyway. But what I do need is the head as an asset, right? And so what I can do is bring over not just a layer from one Photoshop file to the next, but I can actually bring over 